This is linearity example number one. Formally prove whether or not each system is linear. Here we have three systems and we need to formally prove whether or not each system is linear. Well, we need to establish what's called the additivity property as well as the scaling property. The additivity property says that a system operating on the sum of two input signals, x1 and x2, can also be written as the system operating on each of these input signals and then added together. The scaling property says that we can take a scaled version of an input, operate on that, and it's the same thing as first operating on the input and then scaling it. We can combine both the additivity and scaling properties into this proof structure. Here we have the two instances of the system operating on two different signals, x1 and x2. Here we have the scaled versions that are being added together to form y a of n. In a similar way, we can pre-scale and then add pass that through the system and form YB. Then we ask the, ourselves the question, is YA equal to YB? And if so, we say that system T is linear. All right, the first system we're looking at, T1, is five times X of N minus 10. Let's pass X1 through the system, multiply it by the scale factor A1, then do the same thing with x2. Ya is the sum of these two results. Now let's do the prescale and sum operation. And this input is passed through our system T. Now the system operates by multiplying the input by 5 and also using a delayed version of the input. Therefore we have 5 times this quantity. Now we compare the two, R, Y, A, and Y, B equal. Well I can distribute the 5 across each of these terms and then also interchange the order of the A coefficients and the 5. Writing it out in this form, we see that sure enough, Ya is equal to Yb for all n. Therefore, we conclude T1 is a linear system. Next, system T2 is x of n squared. Let's try passing this through our proof structure. X1, as it passes through this operation, would look like X1 of N squared. That passes through our scale factor A1. Similarly, X2 passes through the system, gets scaled by A2, and we have this result for Y sub A. And we'll pass X1 through the scale factor and then sum. This becomes our input to the system system T. Yb of n is going to be whatever we pass into the input side squared. Now we compare these two to find out if they're equal to each other. I'm going to multiply out. We have a1 times x1 times itself. And I'm going to insert a squared on x1 here shortly. There we go. We see that we have really a number of cross products being generated here. Therefore, ya is not equal to yb. t2, in this case, is not linear. Our third system. T3 operates on x of n by dividing each value of x by n. So 
So in a similar procedure as before, we pass x1 through the system, multiply it by a1, same for x2, and then add those two together. This input to the lower version of t is the same as before, and we have this result. Now the n can be distributed across the, the sum, and we see that this expression is identical to that expression, and system T3 is linear. Well, that wraps it up for this example.